The sounds of rising winds could be heard. And I could feel something cold hitting my bare skin. Hee 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 hee! Finn was getting more frantic. Hmm. Uh, shut up, uh, just let me sleep. Let's. Oh, whoops. The sea is scary, so scary, but pretty. Drip. Drop. My eyes opened as the cold drops hit my face. Where am I? Uh, why am I sleeping here? To my half asleep mind, the scenery looked unfamiliar, and I couldn't remember how I ended up here. But as my mind began to clear, a sudden realization took all the blood from my face. This place was always quite familiar, but I had never seen it look so ominous and windswept. Chisa, w wake up! Uh, just a little more. Emily, too, get up! Leave me alone, Papa. I looked at the sky. The clear blue sky was covered in dark gray clouds. Below them, the shrill wind howled through the cliffs and across the beach. Eee, 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 eee. Fid was shrieking at Chisa from the water, trying to warn her. Oh, this is bad. Uh, uh, what? What am I doing here? Uh, we fell asleep on the beach. The beach? Uh, we're still on Minamijama. And, uh, look at the sky. What? Ah! It, it's... It's a typhoon! Chisa began checking the weather forecast on her smartphone. But it was obvious. Emily, wake up! Emily! Uh, what's wrong? We have to get out of here. What? Chisa was already up and getting the canoe ready to go. I ran over to help. Oh, why are you guys in uh, such a rush? This is a typhoon. If you don't hurry, we'll never make it back to Ch 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 Ma. Hey, come on, Emily, help. I yeah, sure. The three of us pushed the canoe off the beach and into the water. It Granted, I don't have. Mm. Anyways, we quickly climbed inside as Chisa tried to start the engine. Huh? What's wrong? The engine won't start! What? I is it broken? I have no idea, but it won't start at all. Instinctively, I grabbed the paddles and started rowing. Chisa kept trying the engine, but it wasn't looking promising. Oh, what the heck? Wh what is with this thing? There's clearly no choice but to row back to Chichijama. But that soon became impossible, too. Oh wow, look at those waves! The small inlet was sheltered, so there were hardly any waves at all. But right beyond the inlets, the sea was in an uproar. There's no way we could cross that in a canoe. And then... The skies opened up. Ah, it's pouring! I used the paddles to take us back to the beach. Uh, we have to pull it up so it doesn't get swept away. Yeah, got it. As we pulled the canoe onto the beach, the heavy rain continued, and our clothes, dry after our nap, were soon soaked again. What should we do? We have to get out of the rain. Uh, let's head for a cave. We rushed to take shelter in one of the caves in the rocky hillside. We found level ground and tried to get comfortable. Emily and Chisa sat to either side of me. Outside, the heavy rain had grown into a full-on storm. The typhoons in Ogasawara Islands were different from the mainland, and for a first-timer, they could be terrifying. <sighs> if we were out in the open water now, we could have drowned. Seriously, if the engine hadn't broken, we'd be in real trouble. Jesus said gloomily, listening to the wind wailing outside. We had already contacted our families and been told to sit tight in the cave. Hmm. Just for a little bit. Emily took my hand, her expression worried. It's okay, right? Oh yeah, sure. 
thank you, Hero. Emily gripped my hands a little more tightly. Hi. Right. Squeeze. Uh, what are you doing, Chisa? It's nothing, really. Uh, just feeling a little cold. Chisa said, grabbing my arm and squeezing up against me. Uh, hey. What? You didn't mind the little lady over there? And I'm scared, too. But that's not what I meant. Chisa was in her swimsuit and I was shirtless with her so close her bare skin sat right against mine. Your move is touching me. What's that? Never mind. With Chisa's breast resting against my arm, its softness was made all the more apparent. When we were little, Chisa and I had bathed together, but there had been no trace of the body filling her bikini now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah! Suddenly, a huge gust of wind blew into the cave, and the two girls shrieked and grabbed onto me. It was hard to breathe, squeezed between them. Oh, we should be safe in the cave. Uh, how do you know that? Uh, where's your proof? And we pulled closer, her eyes full of tears, though her eyes also suggested that any uninvited advances would be swiftly rejected. This was a bunker used by the Imperial Japanese Army in World War II, right, Chisa? Yeah, uh, at least that's what my grandpa said. Used by the army? After hearing that, Emily seemed to become bothered by something else. Supposedly, there was a base here on Ogasawara. It's how all of the sunken battleships and freighters in the seas around Ogasawara Islands turned into tourist attractions. The famous Battle of Iwo Jima took place on the Ogasawara Islands. But that was still far from Chichijima. The Ogasawara Islands went pretty far out into the Pacific Ocean. And that's why there are so many. Uh, so many what? Ghosts of fallen soldiers? Beep. Jesus used a spooky voice in an attempt to scare Emily. The ghosts of the soldiers who don't know the war is over wander the island every night. You're lying. I don't believe in ghosts. There's no such thing. It's unscientific. You believing in it or not believing in them doesn't matter. They still appear. There's no such thing. If they're here, I'll break them out then. Are you sure? No, no don't. As Emily buried her face in my shoulder, it was apparent that she was afraid of more than the sea. Come on, Chisa, that's enough. Sure, fine. At any rate, if this keeps up, we'll be the ghosts. Oh. Emily became gloomy when she remembered our situation. I wonder if we'll die here. You're getting carried away. We'll make it back once the storm clears. Ah! A poorly timed gust of wind blew in, getting the girls all worked up again. <laughs> We're done for. Nothing can save us. Mama, Papa, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me for being so selfish. Don't be silly. That typhoon is nothing for Agasawara. You're the one to talk. You're shaking too. That's just because I'm cold. Uh, well then, uh, put on your sweatshirt and stop grabbing all over Hero. I can do what I want. Besides, this is much warmer with his skin against mine. The two of them tightened their grips like anacondas. Since we're going to die anyway, I'll just say it. I hate you, Chisa. Excuse me? You're always teasing me, and you keep getting between me and Hero. And with that, she glared at Chisa's hand on my arm. I'm not getting between anything, and I'm not teasing you. Liar? I'm not lying. It's just... You're so childish and irritating. It's irritating. Childish? You're so mean. You're one to talk. Come on, girls. Get it out. Shut it, Teruka. It's got nothing to do with you. 
it does too. You two are going to keep arguing. Stop squeezing me. Bully. Selfish, stupid brats. Did you hear that, Hero? I only insulted her once, but she insulted me three times. Oh, three is nothing. I can keep going. She says a bully, 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 bully. <laughs> Emily is spoiled, 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 spoiled. Stop it right now! Put myself between them to stop their fight. This is not the time for a fight. Right now we have to work together. You don't have to tell me she started it. But well, we're done it for anyway. It felt good to get it off my chest. Good night. Emily turned her back to us and lay down on the floor of the cave. She closed her eyes but never released my hand. <sighs> that was my line. Chisa turned away and lay down. She didn't hold my hand but pushed her back right against me. It looked like they were both going to sleep in a hut. Oh boy. It would be a while before the typhoon moved on and sleeping was a much better way to kill time than fighting. I made myself comfortable and decided to continue my nap. <sighs> As I rubbed the sleep from my eyes, I realized something felt off about my hands. Something that should have been holding on tightly was gone. Huh? What's wrong, Haruki? Uh, Emily's gone. Oh! We got up and left the pitch black darkness of the cave. The winds died down? Yeah, looks like the typhoon's gone. The storm had been violent, but apparently still quite small. We could hear the gentle beach waves through the calm, quiet air. A beautiful blonde girl sat on the tiny beach. Emily was staring up. It's beautiful. Huh? I turned my head skyward and found an inky sky filled with a sea of countless stars. The sky, clear after the typhoon, glittered with millions of tiny distant lights. And there, running through the center of it, was the Milky Way. The incredible scene had me mesmerized. Okazawara's beauty included not only the sea, but the sky as well. I said as the scene before me stirred up many memories. Jesus stood next to me murmuring. This is pretty adorable though. Uh, I mean, I guess it is pretty. Okazawara really is a wonderful place. Except for that scary typhoon. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but I'm telling you, all, all of this is normal. <laughs> Emily suddenly broke out into joyous laughter. I don't know why, but I couldn't help joining in. <laughs> uh, are you guys okay? I mean... Yeah. This is just too much. I mean, just before I thought we were going to die in a storm, and now look at the sky. Where I live, you can hardly see any stars at all. Yeah, me too. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. This is the middle of nowhere after all. And when I went on laughing while Chisa was pouting beside us. Just a few hours ago, we were in a deadly storm, but now we were beneath this beautiful night sky. The difference was overwhelming. But Chisa only grew more and more upset. To her, it looked like we were making fun of her home. Really, guys? What is your problem? Sorry, Jesus. We're not laughing at Agusuara. I guess looking at this gorgeous sky put us in a weird mood. Oh, really? She didn't seem to buy it. Uh, I still have something I want to say, Jesus. And we said as she finally stopped laughing and wiped the tears from her eyes. Jesus stood on guard, her face stoic. I really was just jealous of you, Chisa. Huh? You're so free, you know? I am? Emily nodded. 
You're totally free. When you're swimming, you can really be your true self when you're in the water. Uh, I guess so. She said been bracing herself for more insults, but this surprise compliment made her unsure of how to respond. And everyone around you depends on you. They need you. And I'm jealous of that. You're the one that's actually free, though. What? Haven't you noticed the way your free spirit affects the people around you? No, uh, not at all. She honestly seemed unaware. I guess I was kind of jealous of that. The way you can say it, get whatever you want. Thank you? I, I wonder what it would be like if I had the courage to defy everyone around me and go after what I wanted. Um, Haroki, was that a compliment? Yeah, it was a pretty big one, too. I see. Uh, well then, I'm glad. Uh, thank you, Chisa. Mm. It really bothers me how you became a snob so naturally. Emily and Chisa, or Emily smiled at Chisa, then went over to the water. She stopped when it was about ankle deep, then waved us over. Hey, come here! Chisa and I were still barefoot, so we went in after her. Look, the stars are reflected in the water. Oh, yeah. Wow, stars above and below. I think I found my treasure in the sea. Too bad you can't take it home. Yeah, but I'll keep the memory. Emily stared at the aquatic jewels spread around her feet. There's a ring on that ghost ship. A ring? Emily nodded. My father wanted to give it to my mother. I wonder what she meant by wanted. Papa proposed to her on these islands, but the boat ran aground before he could give her the ring. They escaped to a lifeboat and were rescued, but the ring went down with the ship. So that's what all this was about? My parents are in the middle of a divorce. While Mama is in America, I was supposed to go visit her for summer break. But you didn't want to, so you ran off to Ogasawara? Emily nodded. She must have left for the ferry after finishing her last class of the summer. And that's why she was still in her uniform. Uh, because I'm mixed, if they get divorced, one of them will get custody, and I'll have to give up the other's country. America, Mama's country, is fine, but I love where I was born and raised in Japan, and after today, I love it even more. She said, staring at the ocean and night sky of Ogoswara. But why the ring? Before they married, Papa was really poor, and even though he had nothing, he scrimped and saved and bought that ring. It was proof of how much he loved her. Oh. Sharon and my Maru Part 2. Emily's parents boarded the ship before getting married, but a storm sunk it. Although they escaped safely, the engaged ring her father had bought was left behind and still rests there. If I could find it and bring it back, then they'd fall in love again. Or so I thought. Emily smiled sadly after saying this. I really am a child. People's feelings don't change so easily. I didn't agree with her, though. We were just kids that didn't have the power to change much in the grown-up world. But even so, if anyone wanted to make a difference, then her biggest chance really was finding that ring. A gentle breeze drifted by. It caught Emily's hair as she brushed it behind her ears and looked over at us. Thank you. Thank you both for helping me on this silly adventure. Because of it, I think I can finally move on. Neither Chisa nor I knew how to respond. Part of me didn't want her to give up, but I knew she had to go home tomorrow. She would be better off this way. And thank you for helping me make this make amazing memories, especially tonight. I'll take them with me when I go visit Mama. She said playfully before walking up the beach and back to the cave. As Chisa watched her go, she murmured grumpily. If that was the case, she could have just said so before running after Emily. Wait, Emily! She took Emily's hand shyly and walked hand in hand with her to the cave. 
As there was still time until morning, it looked like Chisa wanted to make a few more memories with her new friends. Wait up, you two! Not wanting to be left behind, I ran to the cave as well. Well, uh, can you fix it? Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. It was morning, and I was working on the canoe's motor. The problem seemed simple enough that even a novice like me could fix it. If it hadn't been for the storm, we could have made it back to Chichijima yesterday. Oh, uh, that's good. Oh, where's Chisa? Emily straightened up and looked out toward the entrance of the inlets. Uh, she's not back yet. Chisa and Finn had gone out to check the condition of the water. The outrigger canoe could only sail on very calm seas. And even though the typhoon was gone, if the waves hadn't died down, we would have to wait it out. But then they swam back to the beach. Uh, hey, uh, Hiroki, uh, got a sec? Uh, what is it? I'm kind of busy. Just come on, just come here. Uh, Emily, you too. Uh, Finn, uh, you take Emily, okay? Hee hee! Did, uh, something happen? I had a bad feeling about Chisa's anxious mood, but Emily and I joined her in the water and headed for the inlet's entrance. Uh, look down. What? Huh? Though Emily and I were suspicious, we looked down into the water. Okay. This was the same area Emily and I had gone swimming in the day before. But the seafloor was completely different now. Huh? <coughs> I was so surprised that I lost all of my air. Yeah, look! In the distance, barely within reach of the sun's rays, was something that hadn't been there for the day before. At first I could only make out a large shadowy object like a boulder. But after looking more carefully... It was a ship. Actually, a shipwreck. What the? It wasn't there yesterday. Meaning? It... I can't do all the voices. It's the ghost ship! <laughs> Last night's typhoon had brought it right to us. The legendary ghost ship. Oh.